born in Memphis, America, <laughs> world. I'm going to try a little reading here from, um, it's about our eternal salvation. It's about it's our eternal salvation. Our eternal salvation of the soul is the greatest issue that anyone will ever face. It is the question of where each one will spend eternity. Jesus Christ put into us perspective. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark 8.36 This should move us urgently address this issue. Salvation has to do with eternal life. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. 1 John 25 for God so loved the world that he gave his only, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also John 14 2 3 this means in this life in the land where there will be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain Revelation 21 4 thou without salvation those without salvation are called lost to them, Jesus will say, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And these shall go away into an everlasting punishment. Matthew 25, 41-46 He has said that it shall end. He will send forth his angels and shall gather them that do iniquity and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and the gnashing of the teeth. Matthew 13, 42. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Hebrew 9, 27. There is a salvation, the salvation in Jesus Christ. Everyone needs a savior. Mary, the mother of Jesus, referred to God, my Savior, Luke 1, 4, 7. She needed a Savior. Everyone needs a Savior because everyone has sinned. The scriptures say, there is none righteous, no, not one. And for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 10, 23. Our sins separated us from God. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Of him it was said, We have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. John 4.42 The Apostle Peter said of him, For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12 The Apostle John wrote, The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. 1 John 4.14 4, We read, We trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men. 1 Timothy 4.10 Jesus Christ died for our sins. 1 Corinthians 5.15.3 John wrote, Not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John 22 when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he purchased our salvation and reconciled, reconciled us to God. We come to the salvation through repentance of sins and being born again. Through the faith of Jesus Christ, Jesus said, you must be born again, John 3, 7. The apostle Peter preached, repent ye therefore and convert it that your sins may be blotted out. Acts 3.19
Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, 1 Timothy 1.15. A scriptural warning. There are warnings in the scripture that we need to understand and give heed to. The book of Hebrews says, let us therefore fear, least the promise being let us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Hebrews 4.1. Jesus said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. Luke 21, 8. Deception is a danger because of the great deceiver who is called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Revelation 12, 9. He is deceiver in religion. The apostle Paul wrote about, the another, about another Jesus, another spirit, another angel. He said, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, and his ministers also transform. As the ministers of righteousness, 2 Corinthians 11, 3-4, the new birth that comes through repentance and the faith in Jesus Christ changes our personal life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 The person who is truly born again has the spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his, none of his. Romans 8.9 When the penitent sinner is born again, he will turn away from sin. The Apostle John wrote, He that cometh, committeth the sin is of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit the, the sin. 1 John 3, 8-9 And why call ye me Lord? <laughs> and why call ye me Lord? Lord, and do not the things which I say Luke 6.46 Remaining saved In order to remain saved after finding forgiveness and being born again has simple requirements which is faithfulness Jesus said If ye continue in my word then are ye my disciple indeed John 8.31 Jesus also taught but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew 24, 13. To the angel of the church of the Samaritan, he said, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. Revelation 2, 10. To the angel of the church of the Sardis, he said, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white, remnant, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Revelation 3, 5. The Apostle Paul wrote, Moreover, it is required in the stewards that a man be found faithful. 1 Corinthians 4, 2. A heavy judgment is placed upon the unfaithfulness. Hebrews 10, 26-27. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for the judgment and for the fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. A willful transgression is not covered by the blood of the Christ without repentance to come back into fellowship with him. The Apostle Peter also wrote, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than ever they have known it and turned from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Peter 2.21 Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself Take up his cross and follow 